The Mutual Broadcasting System, in cooperation with Family Theatre Incorporated, presents The Adventures of Ozzie and Harriet, starring America's favorite young couple, Ozzie Nelson and Harriet Hilliard. Barry Fitzgerald is your host. More things are wrought by prayer than this world dreams of. Here is Barry Fitzgerald. You know, the other day I was walking along the street and I saw a man carrying two bags. One was a heavy suitcase, the other a light satchel. I got interested in the way he was doing things. He'd go along for a half a block, put the heavy one down, walk around, change hands, pick up the bags and start off again. I followed after him and got to thinking, that's the whole story of home life, trying to balance things up. Oh, it's more than budgets, because a man has to have more than material things to balance his life. You know, you hear a lot about the unbalance in the world and at homes today. Yeah, it's easy to get so wrapped up in material things that we forget God and spiritual values. That's why every home needs a daily quiet time for family to join together in family prayer. Family prayer gives the necessary spiritual balance to home. Because it's the daily remembrance of God, and without God, no man can balance his life. Without family prayer, there can be no real balance in a home. Barry Fitzgerald will speak again following tonight's transcribed family theater program starring Ozzie Nelson and Harriet Hilliard. As a rule, Ozzie Nelson of 1847 Rogers Road is a pretty easygoing fella. He doesn't get excited and fly off a handle at every little thing that goes wrong. It's just now and then that Ozzie's temper gets the best of him. Like that day when he was standing on a downtown street corner waiting for a bus. Waiting and waiting and waiting. Oh, what's wrong with this bus system? Well, you can't blame him for getting hot under the collar. Who wouldn't? Well, I don't know. That fella standing next to Ozzie must be different. He doesn't seem to be bothered in the least. <laughs> no, no, my friend. You, you shouldn't say things like that about the bus company. Oh, their service is terrible. The buses are never running when you need one. Look, there's not a bus in sight. Just when I'm in a hurry to get home, too. Somebody sick at home? No, nothing like that. It's just that... Well, it's Saturday, and I like to spend the day with my family. Won't they wait for you? Well, yes, but... Well, you know how kids are. Impatient, like to be on the go. Typical modern kids. No discipline, don't know who's boss. Well, the kids know who's boss, all right. They, they never question it. No, no, it's just that, well, Saturday afternoons, I like to get home and spend a little time with my wife and my two boys. You mean you're afraid if you don't rush right home, they may go off somewhere without you? Well, you know how boys are. It's such a beautiful day, and they get restless if they have to wait too long. Eh, that's the trouble with the average modern family. What's the trouble with the average modern family? Disintegrating. Disintegrating? Disintegrating. Falling apart. Doesn't stick together. Well, my family's home waiting for me right now. We'll probably have a lot of fun together this afternoon. Most likely have something already planned. But you're afraid they won't bother to wait for you if you happen to be a few minutes late. Well, no, I'm not afraid. It's... You, you don't see me frantically worried about getting home. I know my family wait all day for me if necessary. Well, my boys would wait all... Well, anyway, they wouldn't go until... They'd, they'd wait at least... I wonder what's holding up that bus. <sighs> it's really a shame. What's a shame? How little the average father has in common with his own family. Oh, now, wait a minute. Oh, he's necessary. He, he pays the bills, changes the fuses when they blow ah, out. That's where you're wrong. My wife changes all fuses. I don't even know where the fuses are. Well, say, there's the bus. We better hurry. 
Yeah, just look at those people fighting to be the first ones on the bus. <laughs> yeah, look at them. Insecure, panicky, pushing, bumping into each other. It's ridiculous. Say, maybe we'd better get on before all the seats... When a man is secure and confident of his family, he's cool and calm. Sure, cool and calm. Look at them crowding into that bus. Families disintegrating. That's exactly what I was going to say. Families disintegrating. Say, he's leaving. Hey, hey, wait a minute. Hey! Hey, we missed the bus. What do you mean, we missed the bus? I just came down for a paper. I live around the corner. Disintegrating, I suppose. Couldn't wait for him. All I'm good for is to pay the bills. Hello, dear. Uh, Harriet, where have you been? I'm sorry, I didn't hear you come in, dear. I was down in the cellar changing a fuse. Oh. Where are the boys? Outside. Outside? Well, they knew I was coming home, didn't they? Well, yes. Well, then what are they doing outside? Well, if you really want to know, dear, Ricky's digging a hole to China and David's practicing his out curve. Well, that's a fine homecoming. Ozzy, I don't understand. Well, what's more important, David's out curve or his father? Well, you are, of course, dear. He's devoted to you, and every boy needs his father. Hmm? Of course, on the other hand, with the bases loaded and David pitching, that out curve might come in pretty handy. Harriet, do you know what's wrong with the average modern family? Yes. It's the... What's wrong? Well, when the average modern father comes home on a crowded bus, he's usually in a terrible mood. Exactly. No, no, no. That isn't what I'm talking about. The average modern family is disintegrating. What? The family is a unit. It's falling apart. Every member has his own interests. Ozzie, why don't you try driving downtown for a change? Family should be strong, a devoted unit. They should have all their interests in common. Well, that doesn't always work, though, dear. Well, why shouldn't it work? Well, you might possibly enjoy digging a hole to China with Ricky, but somehow I can't quite picture him sitting in on your Wednesday night smoker at the lodge. Harriet, you're just evading the issue. Man comes hurrying home to spend the afternoon with his family, and what does he find? They're not even interested enough to wait for him. Well, dear, if all you want to do is spend an afternoon with the boys, they'd love it. The greatest treat in the world would be for you to take them to the movies. Well, I think I'll have a little talk with David. I'm going to say, David... Hi, Pa. Oh, uh, ho ho, David. Uh, what are you doing? Nothing. How's the old out curve coming, son? Fine. Dave, I've got a really swell idea. What's up, Pop? How would you like to go to the movies with your old dad? This afternoon? Right after lunch. Do I have to, Pa? David. Well, gee whiz, Mom. Me and some of the other kids were going to go down to the park this afternoon to watch the seals. David, would you rather watch the seals than go to the movies with your father? Uh, uh, David, I, I don't want to force you to do anything you don't want to do, but I notice they've got a swell movie at the Rivoli. Uh, Roy Rogers, I think. Uh, and the fourth installment of the Purple Dragon Serial. Uh, then, uh, yes, there's a Bugs Bunny cartoon, I think, and, and the coming attraction. Oh, that sounds wonderful. Wouldn't you enjoy going there with your father, David? Looks like a swell movie. I, I saw the pictures outside. It's something about Roy Rogers trapped in a burning cabin and his horse Trigger is going for help. We, we can stay for two shows if you like. Okay, Pop. <laughs> of course, if you'd still rather go watch the seals... Can I, Pop? Can I? Oh, David, your father's taking the trouble to go to the movies just so you can have a good time. Now, isn't that a wonderful treat? Yeah, Mom, on any other day... Okay, but... okay. If you don't want to go, I'll just take Ricky. I don't want to force anybody to go. I'll just say to Ricky... Hi, Pop! Oh, uh, hello, Ricky. How are you today, son? Fine. How are you coming along with your new route to China? I gave that up, Pop. Gave it up? Yeah. I was digging and digging and digging and digging and digging, and then I figured... Who do I know in China? <laughs> That's pretty good logic at that. Well, I've got news for you, my boy. How would you like to go to a swell movie with your old pop? When? Well, this afternoon. Sorry, Pop. I have a previous engagement. A previous engagement, Ricky. Oh, that's all right, Harriet. Ricky doesn't want to see a swell Roy Rogers movie with the latest installment of the Purple Dragon, two or three or four cartoons, have popcorn and peanuts after the show, maybe a soda, two or three scoops of ice cream. He doesn't have to go. 
Gee, that sounds swell, Pop. Mm-hmm. I thought it would. Sure does. Why don't you make David go? Ricky, what a thing to say to your daddy. That's all right if he doesn't want to go, Harriet. Well, Ricky, turning down the movies, I never heard of such a thing. Well, this afternoon I'm going to the Civic Auditorium to see a new television set. Well, nevertheless, I don't think it's very nice Please, of you Please, Harriet, to... if my own two sons don't want to go to the movies with me, that's okay. I just thought it'd be nice if we spent the afternoon together, but I don't want to force anybody to do anything he doesn't want to do. I'll just spend the afternoon sitting here reading. Or... Just sitting. Just gonna sit here all by yourself, reading? Mm-hmm. But don't worry about me. Gee, Pop, you're gonna be sitting here by yourself just reading all afternoon. Mm -hmm. Do you want me to go out and get a paper for you? Come in, Thorny. Hi, Oz. Oh, hello, Thorny. Hey, what are you doing in the house on such a beautiful day? Nothing. Just sitting. Anything wrong? Well, no. Why should anything be wrong? What's wrong with me sitting here by myself? There's no law against it, is there? Well, no. Do I, I have but... to go running outside just because it happens to be a nice day? Well, no. Well, what if I, I don't was... feel like running outside and turning somersaults just because it happens to be a nice day? Well, that's all right. I, I feel like sitting here, and that's what I'm going to do. Sit here. Look, Oz, it's all right with me if you sit there all afternoon. It's just that I thought today, of all days, you'd be bouncing around here like a Mexican jumping bee. What's so special about today? Don't you remember? Today's the big annual charity game at the ballpark. Hey, that's right. Yeah, it ought to be a great game, too. I understand Waterbury has a terrific club this year. I'm taking Catherine, Will, and Julie, the whole family. Hey, that sounds good, Thorny. I'll bet Harriet and the boys are excited about going, huh? No, as, as a matter of fact, we're not going. Not going? Uh, no. But, Oz, you can't do this to the boys. Why, taking a kid to the ball game is the greatest treat in the world. Oh, uh, as a matter of fact, Thorny, uh, the boys are... Uh, they're uh, busy this afternoon. Busy? Yeah, David's going up to the zoo with some of his friends, and Ricky wants to see some television broadcast at the Civic Auditorium. You mean they'd rather do that than go with you to a baseball game? Yeah, isn't that great, Thorny? Young as they are, they'd rather do something educational instead of wasting their time on an old baseball game. Maybe they're not getting enough milk. They get plenty of milk. Is there anything wrong with two boys being interested in educational projects? David is interested in animals. Maybe he'll be a zoologist. Ricky is interested in television. Probably going to be an engineer. Yeah, I guess you're right. You know, Thorny, it's great that my boys are interested in those kind of things, don't you think so? Oh, uh, yes, yes, indeed it is. Darn right. Yes, serene. Well, I, I gotta go and take Will to the baseball game. Uh, he wants to be a third baseman when he grows up. Oh. I'll, uh, so long, Thorny. You care to go to the ball game with us, huh? No, thanks. I'll just sit here, I guess. Uh -huh. Well, it it'll be nice having a zoologist and a scientist in the family. Oh, yeah. So long, Art. So long. Gonna miss the game today, huh? Oh, well, I don't care much about those games anyhow. You know, the crowds and the noise, cheering and no place to park the car. Say, why don't you get Harriet to go with you? She likes baseball. Hey, that's a good idea, Thorny. And Harriet's always ready for anything. Well, sure, she'd love to go you with you. better hurry and ask her, Art. Oh, I don't have to hurry. She'll go. Yeah, I know, but when I came in, I saw her sweeping off the back porch. Well, so what? If you don't hurry, she may decide to become a sanitary engineer. since we've known each other, we've had interests in common. We've enjoyed being with each other. I, I mean, we've palled around a lot together. We've always been good buddies. You've never let me down. How much do you need? No, it, it, it's not that at all. Oh, well, if you want to play golf this afternoon, it's all right, dear. No, 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 it, it's not that at all. Well, dear, it, whatever it is, it'll be all right. I'm going to be busy. Well, I was just going to... You don't have to explain, dear. I have this luncheon I have to go to. Luncheon? Mm-hmm. The girls called this morning. Our club is entertaining some out-of-towners at luncheon, and I'll be leaving about one. Oh. It's uh, nothing you'd care to get out of? Oh, I should say not. It's going to be a lot of fun. Oh, I see. Why, what was it you wanted to do, dear? 
Oh, is no. But, Ozzy, if you... No, 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 really, I... I, I don't feel like uh, doing anything. Are you sure? Oh, positive. I, I'm just going to stay home by myself. Well, <laughs> guess I'll go into the living room. What are you going to do in the living room? Sit. Just sit. That's all. Disintegrating. Disintegrating before my very eyes. his own family disintegrating before his very eyes, when the other members of the family have interests that don't include him, there's nothing for him to do but just sit in the living room and brood. Disintegrating. But how long can a man just sit? He's only flesh and bones, so he gets up and takes his troubles out into the fresh air. Yo, Mr. Nelson! Oh, hello, I'm you, Lou. It's a beautiful day for the ball game. Yeah. I'm so excited. Four different boys asked to take me to the game. Isn't that super? Well, yes, but that's quite a decision to make. Not for me, it isn't. Well, who are you going with? Four different boys. I've got it all planned. I'm going to sit with each boy for three innings. No, no, wait a minute, Emilio. There are only nine innings to a ball game. What about the fourth boy? If the, day, if the game doesn't go into extra innings, he's the one who takes me home. I suppose I'll be seeing you at the game, Mr. Nelson? Uh, no, I'm not sure I'm going. Oh, Mr. Nelson, I think that's terrible. Well, Why? You know how much boys like baseball. I, I think you owe it to David to take him. Uh, David is busy. Busy? Yeah, he wants to go to the park and watch the seals. Oh. Well, why don't you take Ricky? He's old enough no, to go Ricky to... No, Ricky has a previous engagement. He's going to the Civic Auditorium to see some new television sets. You mean the boys don't want to go with you? Oh, I wouldn't say that exactly. It, it's just that they have other interests. What about Mrs. Nelson? She's going to a women's club meeting. Poor Mr. Nelson. Oh, don't worry about me. I'll, I'll be all right. What are you going to do this afternoon, Mr. Nelson? Oh, I'll just uh, sit around and... sit around and, and think. At your age in life, you ought to develop a hobby, Mr. Nelson. Now, listen, Emmy Lou, I'm not... Why don't you learn to carve ships inside bottles or collect matchbook covers? I don't care to collect matchbook covers. I have it, Mr. Nelson. Every warm, sunny afternoon, there's some nice elderly men who sit in the park and play cribbage, and I'm sure they wouldn't mind... Emmy Lou, I don't want to sit in the park and play cribbage. I don't want to collect match covers. I'm happy just the way I am. Do you hear me, Emmy Lou? I'm happy. Very happy. Okay, Mr. Nelson. You say so. I didn't know you were happy. You look so sad. Oh, I may as well tell you the truth, Emmy Lou. I, I'm very worried about the family. We're sort of disintegrating. We used to stick together all the time. Now we all seem to have different interests. That must be your fault, Mr. Nelson. Yes, I guess maybe it is. The family unit is supposed to revolve around the father. Mine just revolves. It's up to you to keep your family together, Mr. Nelson. I try. I want us to spend this afternoon together, and they all had something else to do. Well, assert yourself, Mr. Nelson. You're the head of the family. Put your foot down. Emmy Lou, you're right. That's what I ought to do, assert myself. It's my duty to put my foot down, and by George, I'm going to do it. Good for you, Mr. Nelson. It's my duty to keep my family together. Exactly. You've got to put your foot down. It's for their own good. We're disintegrating every minute. You can't wait. Tomorrow may be too late. I'm going in right now and tell them. Don't take no for an answer, Mr. Nelson. Put your foot down. Don't worry. I'll put my... Yeah. talk to you. Can it wait, dear? I've got to get ready for the club meeting. No, it cannot wait. Okay, dear, what is it? Harriet, I want to talk to you. Yes, dear? Harriet? Yes? Uh, Harriet, if you're in a big rush, maybe this can wait. No, that's all right. I've got a few minutes. 
Uh, good. Uh, how uh, oh, there's a door. Somebody's at the door. I'll, I'll get it. Uh, just go on with whatever you're doing. Oh, hi, Thorny. We're just leaving for the game, Oz, and I thought maybe you and Harriet might like to ride down in our car. Uh, uh no, Thorny. Thanks a lot. But there's no sense taking both cars, Oz. Well, as a matter of fact, uh, we're not going, Thorny. It seems that Harriet can't make it. She's going to a meeting of the women's club. She's going to a meeting of the women's club instead of going to the big game? Uh, yeah. How about Dave and Ricky? Did they... No, they, they didn't change their minds. Would you care to join our little family group, Oz? We've got plenty of room in the car. No, thanks. You're just going to sit around here this afternoon? Yeah. Say, Oz, mm -hmm. why don't you take up stamp collecting? I don't want to take up stamp collecting. Um, I better be going, Oz. Uh, say, Thorny. All right. If you wanted to be with your family and there was a good ball game on like today, but they all had different plans, would you insist that they go to the ball game with you? Well, I guess I would. But don't go by me. It probably isn't the right thing to do. I, I don't know anything about psychology. I, I'm old-fashioned. And a fellow who's old-fashioned and doesn't know anything about psychology just has to suffer the consequences. Well, I gotta go to the ball game. So long, Oz. Nice Saturday afternoon like this. A swell ball game like this. And the family's all disintegrating. A man's got to see that the members of his family stick together, have interests in common. And if they don't, it's the father's duty to insist. Put his foot down. It's for their own good. I've got to start right now before it's too late. Sit down, all of you. Yes, dear. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I want to have a little talk with you. Yes, dear. Yes, sir. Yes, dear. Ricky. As head of the family, I've always tried to do what the rest of you wanted to do. I've always tried to bend over backwards to keep from making demands. Isn't that right? Yes, dear. Yes, sir. I've only seen you bend over frontwards. Ricky, please. Are you through, young man? Yes, sir. A family is like a ship on a sea of life. And in times of emergency, the captain must issue orders that have to be obeyed by the crew in order to save the ship from the rocky shoals of threat. That sounds neat, Pop. Ricky. I don't very often force my wishes on any of you, but I see danger ahead. To save our little ship, I have to give an order that I expect you to obey. Of course, dear. Sure, Pop. Sure, Pop. I know you've all got plans for this afternoon, and my orders are to forget them. Well... If you want us to, Ozzy. Yeah, if you want us to, Pop. Sure, if you want us to, Pop. I hate to be so arbitrary, but in this case, I think it's necessary. Well, that's all right, dear. After all, a man doesn't like to have to give orders to his own family. That's okay, Pop. That's okay, Pop. It makes me feel like a heel to interfere in your interests. It's all right, Pop. That's all right, Pop. You people want to do certain things? Why should I? Oh, go ahead and do anything you want to do. Oh, Ozzy, we're happy to give up our plans if it's important to you. Sure we are, Pop. Sure. No, after all, there's no reason for me to force my will on the whole family just because I want to take you to the ball game. The, the ball, ball game! game. Oh, oh, what is it? Is it? Wait a minute. You mean you want to go? Well, certainly. Why didn't you tell us you wanted to take us to the ball game? Well, I didn't want to interfere. After all, you had all the plans of your own. You had to go to a women's club oh, meeting. Oh, that was just a short luncheon. We're sponsoring the Bloomer Girls, and then we were going to watch them play a three-inning exhibition before the big game. Oh. Well, Ricky was going down to see some television set. I spent my allowance. I didn't have any money for the ball game. They're showing the ball game on the television set. David, it looks like you'll just have to go down to the zoo some other day. Zoo? Well, yes. Didn't you say you wanted to go down to the park and watch the seals? Are you kidding, Pop? That's who's playing. The tigers are playing the Waterbury Seals. Waterbury Seals? You mean we all want to go to the ball game? Yeah, we do. Well, what are we waiting for? Let's go. The SS Nelson is ready to take off. All aboard! Pull up the game!
cover up with me, old friend. I'm not trying to cover up. But, Oz, if your family is with you, where are they? Oh, here and there, all around the park. <laughs> oh, now, Oz, you're a kid. No, I'm not. Look, you see that kid hanging over the bullpen watching the Waterbury Seals warm up? Yeah. Well, that's David. You see that other kid over there by all that equipment and stuff? That's Ricky, watching him getting ready to televise the big game. Well, fine, but where's Harriet? Are you kidding, Thorny? Who do you think that is out there playing second base for the Bloomer Girls? Okay, gang, it's an easy out. She can't hit. I'm your toe, boys. Let's go. This is Barry Fitzgerald again. You know, it's nice to meet people who are kind and happy. Of course, it isn't always easy to be that way. Ah, we all have our moments, yes, and we all have the difficulties and inconveniences that sometimes get us a little riled up. But, you know, that's mostly because something's been misplaced or there's something missing either around the house or in people. We can't expect people to think of things or do things a certain way, and we're upset if they don't. But isn't it true we often get grousy and annoyed, and the real reason is there's something missing in ourselves? I guess we hate to admit that, but it's true. Yes, it's the things that are missing that make for unhappiness. And a lot of homes are unhappy because family prayer is missing. That's something worth thinking about for all of us. Because if you want a real happy home life, you must have a daily remembrance of God in your home. That's what family prayer is. It's God's wonderful way to bring a family close together in happiness. That's why we believe that the family that prays together stays together. This is Barry Fitzgerald saying good night and God bless you. Our thanks to Ozzie Nelson and Harriet Hilliard for their performances this evening and to Max Terror for his music. This transcribed production of Family Theatre Incorporated was directed by David Young. Others who appeared in tonight's play were Janet Waldo, John Brown, Tommy Bernard, Henry Blair, and Jeff Chandler. Next week, our Family Theatre stars will be Tom Conway and Natalie Wood in Once on a Golden Afternoon. Your hostess will be Maureen O'Sullivan. This series of the Family Theater broadcasts is made possible by the thousands of you who felt the need for this kind of program, by the mutual broadcasting system which has responded to this need. Be with us next week at this same time when our Family Theater stars will be Tom Conway and Natalie Wood with Maureen O'Sullivan as hostess. John Rustad speaking. <laughs>